Two and a half meters long, armored like a tank and crawling through the water with claws big enough to grab a fish, that was a scorpion, not the kind hiding in your shoe. I mean a monster called Ye Coleopterus. If that thing showed up at the beach today, nobody's going swimming ever again. And scorpions didn't stop there. On land, some grew close to a meter long, turning the swamps of the Carboniferous into their hunting ground. These were some of the most terrifying arthropods to ever live. So how did we end up with the tiny versions we see today? Long before scorpions made their mark on land, their cousins were already ruling the water. These were the Eurypterids, better known as sea scorpions, and they were among the largest arthropods to ever exist. The true giant of the group was Yecolopterus renaninae, a predator from the Devonian period, around 390 million years ago. Based on fossil remains, it could reach an estimated 2.5 meters in length, longer than a grown man is tall. Sea scorpions had the tools to match their size. Their bodies were covered in armor-like plates, and their front limbs ended in massive, spiny claws that could snap shut on prey with precision. These weren't random grabbers. The claws were jointed and flexible, perfect for seizing early fish or other arthropods and dragging them in close. Most Eurypterids lived in shallow coastal waters, brackish lagoons or freshwater rivers and lakes. Fossil trackways even suggest some species could haul themselves briefly onto land, though they were still very much aquatic hunters. Their paddle-like back limbs worked like oars, helping them swim, but they weren't built for speed. They were ambush predators, waiting for prey to pass within striking distance. And they weren't all giants. Eurypterids came in a wide range of sizes, from less than 20 centimeters to the multi-meter monsters like Eucalopterus. Some were broad and flat-bodied, hugging the sea floor. Others were streamlined swimmers. This variety made them incredibly successful. For more than 200 million years, sea scorpions thrived across the world, from North America to Europe to Asia. Scorpions didn't just stop at the water's edge. Once arthropods began exploring the land, some of the largest predators to crawl out of the swamps were scorpions. And unlike the palm-sized hunters we know today, these early land giants reached sizes that sound unbelievable. One of the best known is Pulmonoscorpius kirktonensis. From the Carboniferous period about 345 million years ago, fossils discovered in Scotland suggest it could grow up to 70 centimeters long. That's a scorpion nearly the size of a house cat, armed with pincers and venom stalking through dense coal forests. Pulmonoscorpius was one of the largest known terrestrial scorpions and would have been a formidable ambush predator, preying on early amphibians, insects, and other arthropods. Another contender is Brontoscorpio anglicus, which lived even earlier, during the Silurian period. This species has been estimated at close to a meter in length, making it one of the biggest scorpions ever described. Brontoscorpio still carried traits for both water and land, meaning it probably lived in coastal environments as well as swamps, bridging the gap between aquatic and fully terrestrial scorpions. These weren't isolated oddities. Giant scorpions and their relatives thrived across multiple periods, from the Silurian through the Carboniferous, with species spread across what is now Europe and North America. Their body design was already surprisingly modern, powerful pincers at the front, a segmented body, and a tail tipped with a stinger. It's a design so effective that scorpions have hardly changed in over 400 million years. Looking at fossils of scorpions nearly a meter long, or sea scorpions over two meters, the first question is obvious. How could they even get that big? Modern scorpions are limited to a size that fits in your hand. So what made their ancient cousins so different? The main factor was the atmosphere. During the late Paleozoic, especially the Carboniferous period, oxygen levels were far higher than today. While our air holds about 21% oxygen, back then it was closer to 30 to 35%. That might not sound like a huge jump, but for arthropods, it made all the difference. Scorpions and their relatives don't have lungs the way we do. They rely on diffusion through structures like book lungs or gills to get oxygen into their bodies. In today's atmosphere, that system puts a limit on how large they can grow before their tissues can't get enough oxygen. But in a world supercharged with oxygen, those limits were much higher. That's why we see not just giant scorpions, but dragonflies with wingspans the size of a hawk and millipedes stretching several meters long. 
Another reason for their size was the lack of serious competition. When sea scorpions ruled the waters, vertebrate fish were still small and relatively primitive. On land, the earliest amphibians were clumsy and slow compared to later reptiles. With little standing in their way, arthropods like giant scorpions had the freedom to push the limits of size and dominate ecosystems for millions of years. That golden age didn't last forever. The giants had their moment, but the world was already changing in ways that scorpions couldn't keep up with. For the sea scorpions, decline started in the Devonian. Fish were no longer easy prey. They were evolving armor plates, better jaws, and faster bodies. Sharks were diversifying into forms that could sprint through water, while early bony fish were turning into serious hunters. The Eurypterid's spiny claws weren't useless, but against a fast-jawed predator, they weren't enough. Fossil evidence shows that by the late Devonian, sea scorpions were already shrinking in both size and variety, gradually being pushed out of the apex predator role they once owned. On land, the Carboniferous coal forests, hot, humid and full of prey, started breaking apart. Climate shifts dried them out, and with fewer swamps, the comfortable hunting grounds of giants like Pulmono scorpius were disappearing. At the same time, early reptiles were beginning to spread across drier landscapes. The amphibians were diversifying into new forms. Giant scorpions that once had little competition suddenly found themselves surrounded by quicker, more efficient vertebrates. By the late Carboniferous and into the Permian, both land and sea giants were fading. Eurypterids, once spread across every continent, dwindled, until only a few small species were left. The Permian extinction, about 252 million years ago, finished the job, wiping out the last sea scorpions entirely. Scorpions never vanished completely. When the giants disappeared at the end of the Paleozoic, smaller species pulled through, and those survivors became the ancestors of every scorpion alive today. From that point on, their evolutionary story is one of shrinking down and adapting to niches where size no longer mattered as much as efficiency. The earliest true scorpions date back more than 430 million years, and for a long time, many of them still carried features suited for life in the water. Some Silurian and Devonian species had gills and swimming paddles, while others were experimenting with lungs and a more terrestrial lifestyle. Over time, the fully aquatic forms were left behind, and scorpions became exclusively land dwellers, though they always kept their amphibious origin in their anatomy. As vertebrates grew stronger and ecosystems shifted, scorpions responded not by staying giant, but by scaling down. During the Mesozoic era, the age of dinosaurs, scorpions were already far smaller than their Paleozoic ancestors. They were no longer the top predators of forests and swamps, but specialists in the shadows, relying on stealth, venom, and patience rather than brute size. Fossils show that by this time, scorpions were already very similar to modern ones, segmented bodies, pincers at the front, and a tail with a stinger. It's a design so effective that it hasn't needed major changes in hundreds of millions of years. Today, there are more than 2,500 recognized species across the globe, found on every continent except Antarctica. Most measure between 5 and 12 centimeters long, but a few still stand out as giants by modern standards. The giant forest scorpion, Heterometra swamadami, from India and Sri Lanka, reaches over 23 centimeters making it the longest scorpion alive today. The emperor scorpion, Pandinus imperator, native to West Africa, grows slightly shorter at around 20 centimeters, but is bulkier, making it one of the heaviest living scorpions. Despite their size, both species have venom that is mild compared to smaller, more dangerous scorpions, proof that in the modern world, intimidation often works better than potency. Scorpions have also evolved clever survival strategies, Many species are nocturnal, avoiding predators and heat by staying hidden through the day. Some live in deserts, burrowing deep into sand to escape the extremes, while others thrive in rainforests, mountains, or even caves. One of their strangest traits is that their exoskeleton fluoresces under ultraviolet light, glowing a blue-green color. Scientists are still debating why this happens. Theories range from UV protection to communication, or even just a leftover quirk of their chemistry. From two and a half meter sea monsters to palm sized desert hunters, the scorpion lineage shows one of the most dramatic size shifts in Earth's history. The giants are gone, but the smaller forms have proven far tougher. They've survived every mass extinction since, 
adapting, shrinking and refining their design into the scorpions we see today. 400 million years later, scorpions are still around, just a lot smaller. Which is fine, because the last thing anyone needs is a Labrador-sized scorpion waiting in the hallway. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.